Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the migration update for May 8th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. Kim and I met at the Braddock Bay West Spit around 5.45 a.m. There had been some thunderstorms that went through around 3 a.m. and woke everyone up, so we were a little tired from that, but the weather was really good. We had a nice southerly wind, and it started out being mostly cloudy, and then um, around 7.20 it really started to clear suddenly as a cold front came through, and we had really good winds, and there was really good songbird migration last night, so we had high anticipation as we got started. Here's a group of five shorebirds that were out on the barrier island and then flew. We see that they have sort of medium-length bills, so they're sandpipers. We see they have black bellies, making them dunlin. Even in the dim light of the early morning, the patterns of the male rose-breasted grosbeak really stood out. It's really quite the experience being out at the West Spit. We like to go all the way to the end where we can get a view out over the bay and also look towards the lake. And then you get a combination of some birds landing in the trees. You get some flying low overhead and then you get some that are really high up overhead. So here we have a photo of a warbler flying high overhead. In this case, it's a yellow rumped warbler, which is one of the predominant species we were seeing today. But there's no way that you could ever get the full experience because there's there's so many birds up high that you just have no chance at identifying and uh, you always feel like no matter what direction you're looking you're going to miss something in a different direction so it's a lot of chaos and a lot of fun in that way here we have another warbler high overhead i'm seeing yellow underneath and a yellow throat and going to a grayish head i believe this is a nashville warbler here we have some blue jays that were part of a larger group we were getting several groups of 50 to 75 individuals for a couple hundred total blue jays this was probably our best bird of the morning. I spotted this across the bay, and it's overall a dark bird with a somewhat long neck and long tail and trailing legs. So it looks somewhat like a cormorant, but a bit smaller, and it had a long decurved bill. This is an ibis, and it's either glossy ibis or white-faced ibis. It's probably more likely that it's glossy ibis, but they look very similar. So unless you get a really close look, you can't tell the two species apart. So we'll have to leave this one unidentified to species, but any ibis you see is really cool. We had our first several indigo buntings of the season, and you just look at the males and you can't even believe that birds could be such a beautiful color. Here we have another warbler high overhead. It's yellow underneath with a lot of streaking to the upper breast. This is a Cape May warbler. We had a total of 75 species from the West Spit. Really good variety today. I got over to the Hawkwatch platform around 8 a.m. and it was a beautiful sunny morning with some clouds coming and going. The winds were mostly from the southwest and moderate to strong. As we got later in the day into the afternoon, it became mostly cloudy and the winds did shift around more to the west. And by the end of the day, they had shifted to the west-northwest and there was some rain that shut the count down early. Before I had even gotten up on the platform, this rough-legged hawk zoomed by really low, and I had bumped my camera into manual focus, so none of my photos came out pretty good. But even completely out of focus, you can identify rough-legged hawks based on the dark underside of the body, the dark carpal patches, and just the overall coloration. It's a very distinctive species. We had a decent broad-winged hawk flight today with 186, mostly coming through as individuals or small groups. We're still seeing a lot of adult broadwings that we're seeing more and more juveniles mixed in. Here we have an example of an adult. Broadwings are small buteos with somewhat pointed wingtips, and the adults have brown barring underneath a dark trailing edge to the wings and a dark tail with a wide white band. Here we have a larger buteo. On this one, we see a belly band and dark patagial bars, making this a red tailed hawk. And notice the banding on the tail rather than the red tail of the adults. This is a juvenile. Here we have a comparison between two species that like to hold their wings up into a V or a dihedral. On the left, we have a turkey vulture. Notice the two-toned appearance to the underside, relatively long tail and very small head. And on the right, we have a northern harrier. Notice the difference in color. It's overall pale underneath. Again, a long tail and kind of long skinny wings. Here's a large dark raptor that was high overhead. We see a somewhat long tail with a white base and we see a very small head. This is a golden eagle, and this one didn't really have much white in the wings. Most of the ones we're seeing this time of year are immatures, especially juveniles, and they usually have pretty big white patches in the wings, but even some juveniles do not show any white in the wings at all. 
Here's a medium-sized songbird that flew by and very yellowish, and it kind of threw us off at first. We see some pointy tail feathers. This is actually a female bobolink. Here we have a gall that had a darker upper surface to the wing than we normally see on the herring galls, and we see a completely black bill. This is an immature, lesser black-backed gall. Here we have a large white wading bird with a long yellow bill. This is a great egret. Here we have a vulture with a very compact shape and short tail, and we see that the white is only at the wingtips rather than the whole trailing edge to the wings. This is a black vulture, and it's only our third one of the season. Here we have a small falcon with an aggressive flight style and dark streaking to the upper breast. This is a merlin. As we got into the afternoon, the flight slowed down overall, but we continued to get a steady line of bald eagles very high overhead. Here's an older, immature, almost in completely adult plumage. We see a white head and white tail, but we see that it still has a lot of splotchy white throughout the underside. Here we have a sandhill crane that was flying really funny. It's almost like it was trying to stand up in midair. For the Hawkwatch today, we had 73 species. With the rain shutting down the hawk watch, me and Kim went over to the firehouse woods to look at warblers. And I got a nice look at my first bay-breasted warbler of the year. And here's another angle of the same bird. You notice that reddish-brown color that extends from the throat down the sides. We see some white wing bars and some blue to the head. We also had some really nice looks at Cape May warblers. And notice the white patch in the wings when Cape May warblers fly. This toad was blocking our path on the boardwalk, and it felt a little bit like he was going to send us on a video game side quest. For the firehouse woods, we had 38 species. After seeing that ibis in the morning, but not knowing for sure which species it was, there was a report this evening of a glossy ibis, so we went out to the spot where we thought it was reported, but we had no luck finding it. Altogether today, we had 108 species, our best day so far this season. The new species for the season today were Swainson's Thrush, Bay-Breasted Warbler, and Indigo Bunting. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had one black vulture, 316 turkey vultures, one osprey, 47 bald eagles, 12 northern harriers, 66 sharp-shinned hawks, 186 broad-winged hawks, 27 red-tailed hawks, two rough-legged hawks, one golden eagle, four American kestrels, and two merlins for a total of 665 migrating raptors. That brings the May total to 6,506 and the season total to 59,109. Taking a look at the forecast for tomorrow, it's looking cloudy with a slight chance of a rain shower and a high in the mid-50s. Winds are light from the north-northeast, not a very favorable wind, would expect light migration. For Friday, we're looking at considerable cloudiness with occasional rain showers and a high in the mid-50s. Again, light north-northeast winds would expect light migration. And for Saturday, it's looking cloudy with occasional showers for the afternoon with a high in the mid-50s. The winds are starting out light from the south and then will be shifting around to a northeast lake breeze. would only expect light migration, maybe a little bit more in the morning, especially if there's some sunshine. But overall, wouldn't expect much once that lake breeze kicks in. All right, another really great day of birding. It was definitely the birdiest I've seen the West Spits so far this spring, and I think that's the best place to be when the winds are out of the south in the early morning in May. And another bird that we saw today that I didn't mention was we had a red-headed woodpecker fly by the hawk watch, but it was too quick for me to get photos. The next few days are looking a little bit slow for the hawk watch and a bit slow for overall bird migration, but there's a lot of birds here right now, and maybe that just means that they'll stay put. So it's definitely still worth getting out in the early mornings and seeing what you can find. I hope to see you out soon in the field or up on the platform. From Lyco Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.